Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. If you watch my show, then you know that I often make fun of cliches. They're the annoying little plot points and reoccurring moments that never seem to evolve no matter how many times we use them. But for as much as I bitch about them, there actually are a fair amount of cool cliches. These are the moments you've seen a million times before, but for some reason you never get tired of. They were awesome when they first appeared, and they're still awesome now. And nothing can ever make them deteriorate their... awesomeness. Whether you laugh at them or take them seriously, they're always a ton of fun to watch. And so, I'm honoring the top 11 greatest cliches that ever existed. Why top 11? Because I have my own cliché that will never die. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 coolest cliches. Number 11. Holding the gun sideways. This is also known as gangsta style, and it is completely pointless. There is no reason to hold the gun sideways. It doesn't help your aim, it doesn't make the bullet go any faster. So why the hell do it? Because it looks friggin' awesome, that's why. Though to be honest, I'm not even sure why it looks awesome. Maybe it shows that the killer is just so laid back and cool that he doesn't even need to point the gun up all the way. Like... Fuck you! You're not even worth using the sight on this gun! <laughs> this method has been used so much that they satirize it everywhere. One of the most memorable is in Superbad. Break yourself, fool! And a more recent satire was in Date Night. God, no! He turned it sideways! Kill shot! That's a kill shot! Whatever reason people do it, it just looks badass. Even if it does make no sense whatsoever. Kill shot! That's a kill shot! Number 10. The sexy cry. Nobody in movies ever has a traditional cry where they start sniffing and snorting and can barely talk. No, no, no. They have the sexy cry. That one single tear that comes down while the rest of their face shows no emotion. Oh yeah. There's two recent film series in particular that use this a lot. One was the new Star Wars movies, where Anakin is evil and angry, but sad. And the other is Lord of the Rings. Good god, everybody cried in this movie. But only two people had the sexy cry. One was Frodo, which was framed so over the top, you swear it was the cover to a New Age album. And the other is Arwen, who I swear to god her only purpose was to ride horses and cry. In every scene, that's what she's doing. Ride a horse, cry. Ride a horse, cry. Even when it seems like there's no reason to do it, she cries. And every time she does it, it's the sexy cry. She's practically perfected it. Oh, wait, getting some hesitation. There you go, sexy cry, oh yeah. I don't know why people don't get snot-nosed and puffy-eyed when they cry in movies, but if they didn't, we wouldn't have this wonderful cliché. What, are you gonna cry now? Come on, cry, baby, come on, cry! Number nine. The past. Every character has a dark, tormenting past that always follows them into the present. It either involves something the character has done, or the death of a family member. And for some reason, that character is usually the father. You killed my father. You killed my father! You killed my father! You killed my father. Why is it always the father and never the mother? It's like, yeah, bitch, all you did was push me out. What the hell do I owe you? I don't know, but whatever the reason, it's always a touchy subject, which requires our main character to always brood away from the crowd, as the one curious onlooker wants to understand. I always wanted to see a backstory that combined all the backstories, like creating the ultimate past. Something like... Blade's mother was attacked by a vampire while she was pregnant. He's more machine now than man. Toon killed his brother. And along the way, he just happened to become the most powerful man in the state. Now that would be an awesome movie! Like they always say, the dreams of the past create the realities of the future. As well as one of my all-time favorite cliches. How did my father die? Drop the piano on his head. Number 8. The Dramatic Choir. This is when the composer of a film decides he or she wants the movie to sound more epic. So a full-on choir is brought in to sing straight-up gibberish that sounds like some sort of dead language. Sometimes they use a real language, like in Hunchback of Notre Dame, they really are singing Latin. Hey, 
hell, in Lord of the Rings, they're actually singing Elvish. What's next? A Star Trek choir singing Klingon? Never play that again. But for the most part, it's just made up words. You can see this a lot in film trailers. In fact, there's actually musicians now who specifically specialize in only writing songs for movie trailers. And you can guarantee if it's an action film, there's almost always going to be a choir. Sometimes they use straight-up English, but try to make it sound like it's a foreign language. That's really weird. Sometimes the most simple ones are the most effective. For example, film composer Danny Elfman uses choirs all the time, but what do they usually say? He literally has the choir do all the oohs and ahs for you. No need for the audience to participate. The movie is praising itself already. My favorite in terms of comedic ones, though, is at the end of Airplane, when a dramatic choir is literally so dramatic that they can't even make the very last note. What can I say? I'm a sucker for choirs, and it looks like most of America is, too. Number seven. Mano y Mano, aka Jousting. This is when our hero is going through like a bajillion bad guys, which always results in the one-on-one -on -one battle with our main villain. For some reason, the main villain always seems to be the longest person to fight too. How come they didn't just use that person to begin with? Clearly, that was the strongest opponent. But oh well. There's another cliche that evolves from this, which I like to call Jousting. This is when the hero and villain stare each other down and just lunge after each other. It's practically caveman-like. It's pure emotion building as they run down an often very long pathway. We saw them lunge for each other in the Count of Monte Cristo. We saw them leap for each other in the Planet of the Apes remake. But my favorite and by far the goofiest is from Mission Impossible 2, when our enemies race after each other on motorcycles and literally propel themselves crashing into the air. Yeah, five fracture bones later, maybe you can fight like that. I just love how they were both thinking the exact same thing. That they were going to end up in the air crashing into one another. Like they both coincidentally said to themselves, Motorcycles aren't enough. Somehow I'm gonna get myself into the air. I don't know how, I'm just so filled with rage. Pure emotion coming out in one solid charge. That's a cliche that's worth seeing a few times more. Number six, things blowing in the wind. This is why so many heroes and villains wear such long clothing, because it looks friggin' awesome when it's blowing in the wind. Hell, the invention of the cape has no real purpose. It's just there to look cool. In reality, that thing would get in the way if you were ever trying to fight. You trip over it all the time. But in movies, it just makes the motion of our hero look all the more flowing, therefore more cool. But to be fair, it looks pretty intimidating on villains too. I think I first started to realize how good they look when Nicolas Cage stepped out in Face Off. All I could say to myself was, I want that fucking coat, and a giant fan to follow me around all the time. But women aren't left out of the loop either. In fact, they can often get away with it a little more. Long hair, long dresses, long scarves, whatever. They're practically designed to look cool when the wind is blowing. So, how long will it take for this cliche to get so old that we're sick to death of it? Number five, the explosion just a few feet away. If anyone has ever been around a real explosion, you know how powerful it is, as well as how deafening it is. Nobody can just stand around while an explosion goes on. You'd either fly up in the air or your ears would explode from the sound of it. Yet we constantly see people run, walk, and even just stand perfectly still while they happen. My favorite are the ones where they don't even turn around. As if to say, yeah, I know it's there, but I'm just too badass to turn around and look at it. What, you think I don't see explosions? I do, all the time. They bore me now. No matter how over the top, they try everything. Like how about when Keanu Reeves outrun a friggin' mushroom cloud in Chain Reaction? 
And need we forget the world's strongest fridge in the last Indiana Jones movie? Yeah, your house would be torn apart, but at least your popsicles would stay safe in the icebox. Isn't that good to know? Explosions are awesome, but they just don't seem to have as big a threat in movies. We almost ignore them. Even in the new film The Other Guys, they satirize how literally blown out of proportion they are. How do they walk away in movies without flinching when it explodes behind them? There's no way! The movie industry is completely irresponsible for the way they portray explosions! Well, it still looks neat. It makes our heroes look tougher and our villains much more menacing. Cause let's be honest, anyone looks tough when they can honestly look at a giant ball of fire and smoke and simply utter, seen it. Number four. The simple shouting of no! Why do so many people shout this anyway? It's so basic and yet it conveys so much. I guess as humans, we just want things to go according to plan. We always want to hear yes. So whenever we hear a no, we immediately think, oh, something was suggested that resulted in a negative verbal response. That immediately creates drama. And that's bad. I better watch this. No! It's like a gut reaction. We hear the word no, and we instantly associate it with something going wrong. Yes! Good! No! Oh, bad. There's a lot of famous no's out there, probably the most notably when Luke Skywalker finds out who his daddy is. No! My absolute favorite, though, is in Tombstone, which is already a pretty romanticized film, but it results in one of my all-time favorite scenes where White Earp just cracks. No. No. What? What are you doing? No. Son of a bitch. No! Can you not die laughing at that? It's one of the most over-the-top scenes ever. No! And he doesn't even stop there. He just keeps saying it over and over and over. No! No! I have a negative impulse to this scenario. I have a negative impulse to this scenario! No. And of course, the ultimate puss-out moment in any Star Wars movie. And that's saying a lot. No! especially piss people off because now Darth Vader has his suit up. He's badass. He's the character we all recognize. He wasn't whiny Anakin anymore. And what's the first thing he says? Where's my girlfriend? I want to see my girlfriend. What, she's dead? No! Hell, Mr. Bill sounded more butch than you. <laughs> so if the art of drama could be reduced down to simply one word, I think we all know what it would be. No! No! Evil laugh. Again, half of the time it almost seems like there's no reason for it. Something goes right for the bad guy, and they always let out a gush of evil laughter. <laughs> I mean, it's not like if something goes good for someone else, they let out insanely loud laughter. Oh hey, I found my lost state ID. <laughs> For whatever the reason, it's always great. And there have been some real fantastic evil laughs. Like remember Gary Oldman in the remake of Dracula? <laughs> How about Jabba the Hutt's evil chuckle in Return of the Jedi? <laughs> the Joker, good God! Every laugh from every variation of the character was just awesome. Jackson knew if you wanted music videos about zombies to end right, you need a Vincent Price cat. <laughs> this too has been satirized to death, particularly in the Austin Powers movies, as they ask the question, what does a villain do after they stop laughing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's goofy, but when it's done right, it's sweet laughter to our ears, and can pretty much put a smile on anybody's face. Number two. Walking in a straight line. 
This shows that the group is together and are ready to kick some ass. Something about the strength in numbers and organizations just makes this scene look so awesome. I think just about any group of people can do this and they can look great. Hell, we even did it in Kickassia, and we look pretty cool. Well, for the most part. Even a whiner like Anakin suddenly grows some balls when he has a line of soldiers behind him. Look at him here. A little pipsqueak who switches sides in a millisecond and starts crying over it. Where, where, where? But once you put a straight line of people behind him, holy shit, he's suddenly badass! I'm actually looking forward to children being slaughtered! The movie that probably exploited this the most, again, was Tombstone. They liked this straight line so much that they actually closed out the movie with it. And can you blame them? It's freaking cool! Even in movies like X-Men 3, just standing in a straight line looks pretty hardcore. I gotta admit, I don't see this all the time, but when I do, it always upgrades the movie's awesome levels. It looks tough, intimidating, and organized. You know a group means business when they all stand together, and it always makes for one of the coolest, if not the coolest, moment of a movie. And the number one coolest cliche is... Slow motion. Well, yeah. Pretty basic, isn't it? Fight scenes, close-ups, whatever. Everything seems to look better in slow motion. There have been online videos, comedic sketches, even entire shows just dedicated to how things look in slow-mo. It's just so much more grand and powerful when you can see the movement of every little part on screen. There's almost a rhythm to it, like a dance or a ballet. Almost anything can look cool in slow-mo. Well, again, almost anything. Now recently, there's been sort of a weird twist where some directors slow the movie down and then speed it up, as if to make up for lost time or something. I never saw the point of it. The slow-mo itself is so friggin' sweet that after watching it, regular motion's already gonna seem like fast motion, so I speed it up. Either way, as long as the slow-mo is there, it's always gonna look fan friggin' tastic It makes everything look more massive, more sweeping, and of course, more awesome. There's no telling how long this cliché has been around. But judging how long we've been using it, it's showing no sign of slowing down. Slow motion, the coolest cliché of all time. And those are my top 11 coolest clichés. I hope you enjoy them, and... Well, I was gonna close off showing one of the clichés again, but my guess is you're probably tired of them by now. No! Hey, calm down! No! No! I'm the Nostalgia Craig, I remember so you don't have to... No! Crazy wire!